Okay. All right, we're ready to roll. Uh, hi, everyone uh, who's tuning in and watching uh, another Sage Vision uh, Pennsylvania grant, assistive technology grants video. These, these videos are for you. They're, uh, we wanna help you better understand the uh, devices that, that are available for you to uh, choose and purchase with your, your grant monies and have the assistive technology in-house on-site. Uh, and of course, the whole idea here is that your customers, your clients, uh, who are visually impaired or blindness clients can try these devices and you can help them get them in their hands and help them determine whether this is a device that's going to change their life. Um, in this video today, we are, we've got our friends from HIMSS with us, uh, Earl Harrison and Thomas Simpson. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hello. <laughs> and all of you know, if you've watched some of the other videos, and we hope that you have as you're making your decisions about what to, how to spend that grant money, um, all of you know that this, the purpose of these videos is to really, it's not to sell you, not to demo you, but really to give you a chance to see the products. Uh, give you a little thumbnail on the clients and customers out there in your uh, service area that may be very well suited to try these. So today we're going to him we're going to focus on blindness products. They're in your hymns products are incorporated in the packages that we have set up for for you for the grant monies and uh, the, the devices that you're going to choose. And also we've got the just want to remind you we've got the a la carte menu where you can order every device individually. So Hims, uh, you guys are gonna take, take it from here. I'm gonna ask some questions. We're gonna have a dialogue and I'm excited about it because I'm always learning more and more about their great products. And uh, this is an area where um, it really, there's not a lot of knowledge and uh, we wanna make change that. And so everybody knows uh, a lot more. Um, so, Thomas, uh, hi, you want to start and you're going to show sure. a couple products and then we're going to dig in with Earl and Thomas. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for having us. Sure. Um, my name is Thomas and I'm with Hims, and I'm going to uh, talk to you about two products. Um, the first one is going to be the Braille Sense Polaris yeah. Mini. Yeah, so Thomas is going to, just so everybody knows what we're doing as you're watching this, in case you put it on pause, Thomas is just going to briefly show the products really well, kind of, you know, Vanna White mm -hmm. it. <laughs> and then we're going to we're gonna dig in and talk about why you might choose this and who it's good for and how we're going to support you. Absolutely. Okay, so what was that one again? So this is the Polaris Mini. Can you um, and so I'm going to hold it up go. to the camera there. Perfect. Um, so what you'll notice here on this top, there are a bunch of keys. This is where a person is going to be able to type. Uh, we've got some several function keys down below and a little space bar here. And what a person is going to be able to do with this keyboard is essentially uh, type. Um, I know it might look a little bit funny, uh, but it's kind you of might show us. practice. Yeah. yeah so Thomas, so. Here, can you show us the sides in the back real quick? Show the folks. Sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Just, yeah. So uh, we refer to this as the top panel. By the way, this is the Braille that a person okay. would read. These pins go up and down, and that's where uh, somebody's going to be okay. read. Um, but then here on the front, we've got a whole host of keys that do different things. You can lock the keyboards and stuff. We have uh, media buttons here. Uh, uh -huh. These media buttons are basically to play uh, audio files and such. You've got a power switch here. On the other side, we've got this cool port. It's a USB C port. That's where you plug it in and power it. And then uh, for uh, signing colleagues, if you wanted to show this, uh, you know, on a TV or monitor, that's a little ah. uh, HDMI um, micro port. Okay. Um, and then on this other side, you've got headphone jacks, microphone jacks, and some uh, standard audio, stuff. pretty standard okay. stuff. One really cool thing, it does have a user replaceable battery. Um, oh. So that's, that's important. So, um, Tom, in, so Thomas, yeah, I, go you know, I'm going to jump in here because we want to, so you can hold it up again. I want people to see it. So so like, I don't, I don't, if I'm choosing what I want to purchase, I don't know anything about this, but I know I have some clients out there who are blind, who could benefit from this. Maybe they're uh, BBVS OVR, you know, yeah. they want to get back to work. So, so that, what category is this? Is that in? The, yeah. The 
So this is what we would call a note taker. Okay. Um, and there's really two main types of Braille devices. You have a note taker, uh, like the Polaris Mini, uh, and then we have a Braille display. And I'm going to show you an example of a Braille display in the next product. And so the, the real big difference is this is kind of an all-in-one device. So, so you're going to be all in one. Okay. Browse, so browse websites, send emails, do stuff that you typically do on a laptop with this type of device. So, so see, no Thomas, I think that's, I, you know, and again, I don't want to talk over you, but just so I can have some space here to, to explain mm -hmm. to people, because I'm like them. I don't know as much sure. as you do. And so, you know, so, so that, so basically people use that, people who are blind, use mm -hmm. that. As, as a way to check their email to do all their daily things that they do in everyday life. Pretty much. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, so it's a, it's a, like a good analogy would be a laptop or a tablet. Okay, is, good. That's good. That's a great analogy for what this is. It looks really light too. It looks like you could just throw it in a backpack or. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah, this one in particular is very light, very portable. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, for those of you that are follow, following along with vision, I mean, it's very light, very yeah. portable. Uh, and that's one of the big uh, things about this. So if you have clients that need something, they're going to be going from one place to another. Um, like we see a lot of students use this ah. because they're going from like classroom to classroom to classroom. Or if you've got somebody who's really mobile, who, you know, uh, goes to the local coffee shop and has a coffee and then will go, you know, to the park or something, they'll take this with them. Okay. So but they can still use device. it in their home, right? Like what if I can't oh, afford, yeah. what if it's, so is this like an end, like a one, if, if I have clients, if I'm, you know, uh, one of the agencies, Cambria County or whatever, and I mean, could, could I think of my clients who just need something, they don't have anything like this, but they need, could they use this for at home for anything they needed if they can only afford one by one device? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. um, and it, it, it really just depends on what the person wants to do. Um, but I mean, like, if you want to read books, it's great. If you want to send okay. or receive email, it's great. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you know, listen to music or browse the mm -hmm. internet or uh, any of those things. <clears throat> so it is a fantastic at home device. Um, and that's one of the great things about a note taker, um, just like you would with the tablet uh, or a laptop, you could use it at home, you could use it at school, you could use it at work. And that's Perfect. kind of the same thing with the Polaris Mini. That's awesome to so see right there, every, uh, audience, PAB agencies, right there. That's, you know, if you're thinking about, uh, you know, one product for your for your blindness uh, clients and even people who you don't, you haven't met yet, you know, maybe they don't have access to demos and things so they can come to your agency, they can try this. So can, can we, one more question about the, the Polaris Mini. So, what so let's say i've got a couple of clients i'm in uh you know uh monroe county i've got a couple of clients that i think might be well suited to try this because that's the whole point how how do i how do i show this to them because i don't know anything about braille i don't know how to use it what do i do yeah that's a really good question um so the first thing you want to do um, is get a good understanding of who it is that you're working with, right? Because well, yeah, yeah, they usually know their clients, but sometimes they have new ones. They get phone calls, you know. Yeah, yeah. and so it uh, once you understand who that client is, like uh, if I were to show the Braille Sense Polaris Mini to Earl, um, it would be a whole lot different than somebody who's brand new to note takers, right? So uh -huh. if I'm going to be showing this off to some experienced user, I'm just going to say. It's got this, that, and the other, and here you go. Put your hands on it, play with it, because they're going to know, like, right off the bat. It feels very comfortable, very intuitive, convenient. Like, existing note-taker users, they're probably going to already know how to use this. Mm -hmm. And so you just pass it off and let them play with it for a while. <laughs> right. Like that's... So you should ask, are you, are you a note-taker user? Maybe yeah, ask absolutely. your client that. Okay, a good. That's a good tip. And then if it's somebody who's pretty new to the game, uh, yeah, you're going to have to walk them through a few different things, but the good news is, um, you know, we'll be there to provide assistance, Sage will be there to provide assistance yep. and, and help walk through some of those more, uh, more difficult things. And All so, right, so take the, the intimidation away. It's, believe me, the yeah. thing I love about that being in this work is that you're always learning something new. There's always this great technology out there like HIMSS has. And it, it's, people don't expect you to know everything about every product. 
Yep. And that's completely fine. Yeah. It, it is okay to not to not that's right. everything. So um, any last comments about, or Earl, do you have any that we haven't covered? So the user for the end user for this, you know, we talked about who that might be. Um, and it's portable. Uh, you're going to want to have it in your shop. You can. You, it doesn't take up a lot of space in your agency if you don't have a lot of room for your demos. Um, you mm -hmm. can take it with you if you're going to talk to somebody in their home, right? And um, and it's a note taker. So anything else that we kind of basic that we left out so we can get to the next one? Do you think, guys? No, well, I think this is a good segue to the to the Cube Rail XL. Okay. Yeah. Good one, Earl. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the next product is the Cube Braille XL. And if you remember earlier, I said the difference between a note taker and a Braille display. Yeah. Um, so the note taker is. Can you bring it up of, a little bit to yep. your camera? Oh, there so you go. Thank you. A note taker is more like a uh, tablet or laptop. A Braille display is more like a keyboard that the Braille goes up and down on. So, it's right? more, so I love your analogy. So that's more like a PC or a Mac. Like if you had to say, it's more like- It's, it's more like a keyboard a with key. refreshable Braille. That's the best okay. way to put with some, it does have some onboard features, but really it's meant to be used as a peripheral device is how most Braille displays are done. So what you would do the way most people use this device and other Braille displays is you connect this to your PC. You connect this to your mm. iPhone. So for example, if you have somebody uh, who's a Braille reader, um, one way that they can access like a text message or an email is to listen to it, right? You turn voiceover on on an iPhone and then you can listen to it. I hear Earl doing that all the time. Right? But yeah. it's not always appropriate, right? Like let's mm -hmm. say you're checking your your bank account balance, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want everyone to hear it, right? So what you do is you connect this device and uh, then you're able to read what is on mm -hmm. your iPhone. You're able to read what is on your computer. You're able to, to browse the internet from your existing laptop or existing PC, existing Mac, iPhone, Android device. So is so, that good in the workplace? Somebody who's, you know, is oh, that a yeah. yeah, so this is a uh, great in the workplace and work from home. Um, mm. absolutely. So this device in particular, um, is a non-typical Braille display. Um, and I'm just going to go over real quick. Yeah, do that. Tell us what that is. I, yeah. You're doing a great so, job, Thomas, by the way. I'm, I'm going to hold up both of them and you'll notice it's got these funny little buttons, right? There are eight keys. And then in the middle is a space bar. That's mm -hmm. called a Perkins keyboard. So we've mm -hmm. got those eight keys there. Those represent, you use those to type out your letters and numbers right? Mm -hmm. On a normal Braille display, that's usually all you got. And then you'll have a few keys down here that do some special stuff. Like functions or something. Mm -hmm. Kind of, yeah. This one actually has your function keys. Mm -hmm. So you've got F1 through F12, home down, insert out, page down. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got, uh, let's see, tab, cap, space, control, function, windows, all, all sound very familiar, right? Like you would mm -hmm. have on a regular keyboard. And so for this device, like an existing Braille user, say uh, let's say they wanted to bold something in Microsoft Word on your regular mm -hmm. computer you hit control B mm -hmm. on the Q Braille XL you hit control B on a regular mm -hmm. Braille display you can't do that so so yeah. let's say if you've got let me I'm here's what I'm thinking guys so you so let's say you've got a cost client who's tragically blinded by a car accident okay god god forbid Okay, so I'm I've been in, you know, working in an accounting firm as a, you know, and and that happens. Is that some and and you know, as devastating as that is to get back and become be independent, start my life where it working again. Is this like is that the kind of thing that this would be uh, a, a situation where it would be good to to show someone or how does that how, what do you think? Yeah, I mean it's, it's really great for anybody that's going to be using Braille. Um, so in the previous- is it easy to learn? Is it easy to learn Braille? That no, depends. is it, I'm just saying like in my, oh. situ, in that situation, that hypothetical that I just get, is this a device where somebody could, could learn to use it and get back up on their feet, become more dependent, work again? Yeah, yeah, so it really is. Um, one of the biggest things about um, somebody who is just getting into a Braille device, right? Like let's say they, they know Braille, but they're getting in their first refreshable Braille device. It's really important to know 
um, what existing technology they have mm-hmm. and like and where they're coming from, right? So, uh, you know, like in your example, uh, let's say that person is used to working on a Windows computer, mm-hmm. right? That's mm-hmm. going to be a good frame of reference. Yep. Um, so th- let's say, you know, she knows how to use Braille, so she'll be able to connect this device up to her computer mm-hmm. and use uh, Microsoft Word, um, but instead of using Sight, she'll use the Braille to, mm-hmm. to navigate Microsoft Word, and she'll be able to mm-hmm. type in there. She'll be able to do, you know, everything that anybody else can do. Using um, all the same keystrokes that they used before they mm-hmm. were in the accidents, mm-hmm. you know, because they're familiar with it. If you're familiar with a computer keyboard, yeah, um, imagine the Q Braille as just a computer keyboard, except you're taking away all the numbers and the letters and put in their place a Braille keyboard. Uh huh. Which is a very ergonomic consideration as well, because we've got people who are using it for professional things like, um, yeah, you know, when you, you, yeah, I mean, you want to know how to read back a proper spelling if you're working in a customer service position, or you want to know how to, um, you know, read back a credit card number, and, mm-hmm. you know, w- without having to listen to it auditorily, because that actually slows you down, but. Mm-hmm really a, a more uh, frequent consideration is the ergonomic consideration. And that is, we've got Braille proofreaders and, um, oh my God, medical transcriptions, things like we love this thing because instead of having to go back and forth between their computer keyboard and the Braille display, they can always just stay right on the cue Braille. Yeah. So that, so I think in, in the context of what we're, we're trying to do today, and then we'll move to Earl's, and we, you know, we may have a part two here because, uh, because, but I, we want people, the people to, you know, the, you know, your executive director, if you're, you know, in charge of your IT or a social worker, and you've, you know, got a customer or a client who's in a particular situation, you know, you, it can't hurt to have them try this. I mean, even if it's not the perfect product for them, just to get them started and thinking about. These are the kinds of tools out there, like you said, Earl, who mm-hmm. can that you can use based on some things that you already maybe knew. I mean, I think sometimes people hear Braille and they go, oh, gosh, I don't know that. I can't use this. Right. Right. So I, I think for the agencies, that's a good point, Earl. And we'll segue to you. And is can, that, I, can I interrupt thinking, with one more thing? Yeah. Hang on one second. You're thinking that... Um, just what you said, you're thinking about who I could show this to, why would I purchase it and have it for them? And, and while it may not seem like, uh, you know, it's a solution for very specific situation. And there are lots of people out there who need to try it. Is that accurate? Yeah. And, and, you know, I can also say that any of the devices that we're showing you, whether it's the note taker or the cube rail, uh, can, can be used very well for supporting the learning of Braille. Right. Also, okay. Because you're, you're you're pairing it with with speech output as well. So your screen reader, mm. uh, like JAWS or NVDA or, or VoiceOver on the Mac, is what's driving the Braille display, for example. So if you've got the cube rail connected to a machine and you've got somebody coming into your center. And you just want them to sit down and they might want to just do all the things they, they're used to doing on the computer keyboard. Mm. That's their that's their comfort zone. But then kind of augmenting that with the use of Braille and kind of easing into the use of a refreshable Braille display. I love that, Earl, because you that you could even purchase this and have this available as a resource for people who could come into your agency and use it for a while. In fact, if you've got sighted a Braille teacher, for example, uh, like so many of the, the like the teachers for the visually impaired are, mm-hmm. um, you can just connect something like the, the Braille Sense Six, which is going to be our next product, to mm-hmm. uh, a monitor, just a, a, a plain. So this is the Braille Sense Six. Are you able to see it? Okay. And we are going to come back to you, Thomas. I'm uh, uh, yeah. Uh, that's good. Go ahead and flip it over. Flip it over. There you go. Okay. <laughs> you got, yeah, it was upside down to you guys. So you're doing Braille Please. Six. Okay, good. Yeah, so I, 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 that's just the happy sound that it makes when you uh, hover it. on the device. I love it. Um, before I move on, did, did Thomas, you want to just go Yeah, ahead go back. Tom, thought? Sorry, Thomas. I just wanted to complete that thought because Earl, you were on a path there that was a really good okay. one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, so um, uh, it's 
two things down. Number one, uh, the reason one big thing between the Cubrail XL and the Polaris Mini you'll notice is the size. The Cubrail XL is definitely wider, so it's not as portable, but it has 40 Braille cells. So a person who's going to be reading a lot is going to want more Braille cells. That's a big consideration. And that now, actually- we're not, we're not trying to sell it to you. We're just trying to show you the it's, difference. Well, it makes a huge difference yeah. in application, right? right? So right. you're going to be doing a lot more scrolling, having to go line by line on a smaller number of Braille cells than you will on this. What's it's the like, mini? Uh, How many cells? 20 cells. So, so for people who, mm -hmm. if you're thinking about this and you can only buy one with your money, okay, that's all the body budget you have and you want to buy a blindness product and get that in there. So what, what do you say to that? If they only could buy one, the 20 slower or the mini is slower because it's only 20. It depends on how much reading you're going to want so to be doing. So it's for a client and, who's going to be reading a lot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and the other other probably most important thing um, is that the actual look and feel of the device is incredibly important to people. Um, one of the things that uh, like if I'm going out there and I'm talking to a pr particular client trying to get a, a, a feel for if something's going to be good for them or not, yeah, there's no better uh, thing than to put it in front of them have it in their hands so that they can feel it they can feel uh -huh. the keys and all that sort of stuff because sometimes it's the little things that make yeah. a difference like yeah. the spacing on the keyboard or how the braille feels mm -hmm. or you know is this is that too loud or is that mm -hmm. just quiet enough those are all things that are going to be different for each person and so having it in your hands being able to put in front of them makes all the difference in the yeah. world and that's awesome point. And that's the truth for every single thing that we, every yeah. single choice that you all, that the, that the, the PA, the, the agencies are making and they, mm -hmm. they know that as well as we do. But I think reinforcing that because it's everything in your life is whether or not you feel comfortable with it, whether you can see or yeah. not, you got to feel comfortable with it or you won't use it. Yep. Good point. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thomas. I'm glad we waited for that little last little thing. Yeah. So Earl, I know you've got to bounce, but do you want to get through your Braille Sense 6? Yeah, real quick? yeah, absolutely. So the Braille Sense 6, I mean, so we talked about the different sizes. So the, the oh, we want to the, just go over the features. Yeah. Or not so, the yeah, features, yeah. talk about how appropriate it is. For so, so right. So we've got the Polaris Mini that has 20 cells and the Braille Sense or the, the Cube Braille, which is a, a Braille display, not a note taker. What it is has this 40 one? cells. Huh? What is this one you have, the Braille Sense? This is a note taker. So this the is an all, in, okay. it's an all in one. Okay. It's the uh, Mac Daddy of all note takers. I think it's actually running a current version of Android 10. Um, it's got a lot of memory and it's got a lot of storage space. I mean, it is like a current today tablet that you can take around with you. In fact, when I travel and I know I'm only going to be gone for a couple of days, and I think I don't want to take my laptop with me. I could do my email, the web browsing, okay. all my note taking, my podcasting, listening, okay. my, my, we even actually have a, 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 a third party application that was developed specifically for the Braille Sense 6 called Mo Media. And I'm an audio guy. Um, so for and, people, and, go back to the clients though, that if you yeah, yeah, yeah. the best resource, but oh for my gosh, I'm not going to go getting on the weeds out into the weeds there that's Sorry. okay i'm bringing it back baby well, actually it's really important because earl is a real user yeah. of this like, that's right folks we, like, that's right so it's, in fact when i'm traveling yeah. and i've got my braille sense six with me my personal unit and i'm at the booth for example and nobody's touching my braille sense six it's a per it's a personal thing just <laughs> right. like your phone is a personal thing yeah so I've got the demo on the table and I've got my personal one around my neck. And that's what I'm taking notes with all day long. And, and the battery life on this is crazy. I mean, I, I treat it like my phone. Awesome. I plug it in at the, the end of every day. So it's ready for the next day. But I have yet to go through a day where it's like, and I'm in the middle of something. And it's like, oh, but shoot, I've got to plug You can't it live without it. Right. Mm -hmm. But when I do have to plug it in, all it is is a USB-C, just like, all the computer oh, manufacturers right. are using now. That seems to be the new gold standard, right? Mm -hmm. USB-C, but we also have the old-fashioned USB-A host ports there. Um, 
So you, we can actually plug in a hub to, to this and have all kinds of peripherals like cameras. Yeah. And so like five is so so Earl. So yeah. so the Earls of the are your clients who are like Earl, who are all your how long were you born? Um how long have you been using oh. that? Oh, I've, I've been a user of BrailleSense products since 2005. Okay. Um, yeah, this is just the latest iteration, which is cleverly named BrailleSense 6 because it's the sixth iteration of this product. Right. So yeah. for if I'm thinking, all right, now I've got the, this is in the note taker category. So is the mini Polar, Polaris Mini. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've got to make some choices here and I've got a few of my clients in mind. I know there are other people out there that we need to reach out to and let them know we have this product in house or bring it to them so we can show them. So when I pull, if I'm, uh, you know, in uh, Green County, who do I, who do I say, oh, okay, this, this is who I want to show this to, who's never mm -hmm. seen it or never used it before. So who you want to show the Braille Sense 6 to? Yeah. Um, I mean, anybody who walks through that door who's a Braille user. Okay. You know, or who, okay. who wants to be a Braille user, because again, it's got speech. It's its file. Man. I've got my speech a little faster than most people do. Um, but it's got speech. So it'll actually, you can type, you can even plug a USB, like a QWERTY keyboard into it and type on the QWERTY keyboard. And then look at the contracted Braille if you're, if you're trying to learn your contracted Braille. And this will help to facilitate that learning. So people are learning it. Mm -hmm. People, or who, people are... who are it's, it, it will co you know, cover the entire spectrum of not you know I've got people who are power power users way better than me at and, and in fact I know people who use this device. One woman in, in particular on the job and in her personal life she uses it in all aspects of her life. And she she says that she uses it about fifteen hours a day, and I wow. believe her. So she goes um, so, to dinner, she goes to see family, the holidays right. are coming up. So that's it. It's with you all the time. So yeah, she, she and goes if people don't know about it, they're sense. not. Yeah. What's that? I'm sorry. She goes nowhere with her without her braille sense. As same as you. So um, again, folks, we didn't get into the actual specs. The specs are available in on the portal. We've got yeah. some uh, you know, slides or some information that you can look at, you know, weight. Uh, battery life, you know, blah, 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 all that stuff. You can access that. So guys, what we're going to do, maybe another session, we might have another video on. Um, and I think I learned a lot just with this. I'm a proud HIMS partner, dealer in Pennsylvania. And we understand, Sage understands, There's we've got to get busy getting these devices in the hands of people so they can try them. Right, Earl? And Absolutely. what do you think? And just lastly, like, does somebody have to try this, demo this a few times? Or like, what, what's the process that you usually go through just to share that with people, people, because they're the, the social worker, the, the directors, they're the ones that are going to be, um, you know, giving people access to this and trying it. Like how many, does somebody know right away, like Thomas said, or what, what, how does that work? I think that some people would, would know right away. Um, I certainly have been in situations where I've walked in where a person is considering a couple of different devices and I've handed it this to them. And the response is, oh my gosh, this is so lightweight. It really well, is. Well, any of the products though, really. Right. Yeah. But I'm talking yeah. more about like, well, I'm just trying, we're, I want people to have a sense of when you show these devices to someone, to your clients, like what the process is? Do they need to keep it for a while and try to use it? Or what do you guys think? I think so. I think that once you, you as an agency, you're comfortable with your clients. Um, uh, you know, you, you've shown it to them. They've expressed an interest. They've got perhaps, you know, the funding resources to get it. Mm -hmm. uh, then, then I would say that it's, it would probably be a good idea to, to work out a loan arrangement for a couple of weeks and see how it works right, in yeah. life. Um, but these are such like such highly personalized devices. It's 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 kind of hard to do without actually owning one. Yeah. So, um, Once you try it, you like it. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that. Well, I think this is we've covered a lot. We know for everybody watching, it's a lot to take in. I think it's exciting what this industry has to offer and what Sage, uh, as the dealer and Hims as the manufacturer, can put out there. 
Um, and I think that um, uh, you guys did a great job. Um, we're here to, you know, if, if people have, if you've watched this video and you're really leaning toward a specific product or not to purchase with the grant monies, you can, of course, reach out to us, the 800 number, everything's on the portal. But Earl and Thomas, is it okay if people call you guys directly and just say, oh, hey, I'm a grantee thinking about this. Can you talk sure. to me a little bit about it to help me make my decision? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, have, we do that all the time. Good. How about you, Thomas? Yeah, we're, Except we're here you're in Oregon, so you might not be awake. <laughs> or, or I might be working late. Or you uh, might be for, working late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of course, I'm 24-7, so you can call me anytime. I may not answer, but I'll get back to you. <laughs> but um, I'll email. But this has been great. Um, I think that, again, HIMS is, a, is an excellent company. You guys provide great tech support service. Um, anything you want to say about that real quick at the end here? We're not, again, we're not trying to oh, sell you. No, we're just trying to let you know what support you get. Should you, you know, purchase we, this? We do do our best here. We've got great tech support guys. We also have a, a technical support page on our website. Which yeah, we'll have all have, that. Yeah. All that stuff. And we'll facilitate we it if we need how to. to. How to frequently requested how to videos too. So little three, five minute videos of mm -hmm. how to do particular tasks you just go you know down what, or we'll put some of those on we'll have those on the portal yeah. we'll have a few yep we'll direct those that's a good idea it's just because if i'm going to buy this if i'm thinking of buying this i'm like well here i get it now what do i do yeah you know oh or when gosh. i run into a glitch and again sage can facilitate that we're there too um We've got lots of videos to help with that yeah it's good that's what i thought even though people can't see them necessarily they can hear them exactly and a lot of them are done by myself. So I do that with that in mind. So I've got uh, the visual element and I, 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 you know, talk people through with the expectation that it's a blind uh, consumer. That, that's the yeah, because you know what it's like, girl, you're one of the, you're, you need yeah. to, well, uh, you need to compete with the blind guy on uh, YouTube. Yeah, you know what? I need to compete with the sighted people in the real world. That's too. true. You do. <laughs> this is what I love oh. about you. Because you live it. You walk the oh. walk, talk the talk, right, Thomas? Absolutely. And, um, you know, that's the best okay. example of why these products, you need to have these products, at least a few of them in your shop, in your on site, because people need them. Thank you guys well, thank very you. much. You did great. And we hope everyone out there learned a thing or two that you didn't know. And uh, what can you just shout your the number that you will have it in the portal, but why don't you just shout the number out that they can call you at? You, you want, Earl, why don't you go first? Yeah, so my, my phone number, my direct work number, which is basically a cell phone here in Minnesota where I'm from, is 512. 914-1925 and you can always reach out to me by email as well yeah we'll and, put that out you don't have to yeah. say that we'll put that okay, out good. but if they okay. want to just call you after you know jot it down as they're listening to this video sounds good watching. how about you thomas what's your number phone number yeah 512-968-4496 okay and we'll put that up you guys know how to reach it reach me and um, these guys can answer some of your questions that you have before you make a decision. And that's what they're there for. And um, um, this is awesome. I yeah. love the opportunity. And one last thing, I mean, we're definitely here to help you help your clients. So yeah, make sure that if you do decide to get a HIMSS product, we're here, Sage is here to help support you, support your clients. Yep. Success, so, right? Yeah. That's the name of the game. Perfect. Yep. Support the yes. success. I love it because that's Sage's... Uh, we're the same way. Bye, guys. Thank See you. Bye. Guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thomas Simpson from HIMS is here with me. Uh, HIMS and Sage work together on uh, blindness products. And Thomas and I are just having a little chat, thought we would uh, record it. And he's got some insights for the teachers of visually impaired uh, here in Pennsylvania that I, I would love you to share, Thomas. Hello. Sure. How are you? Hi there. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we were talking about this. Um, 
me being a sided guy, right? I, I work for Hams and a lot of times I go out there and I have to show somebody how to use a Braille device, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and being a sighted guy, I don't use Braille every day. I don't read and write in Braille every day. I like the teachers. But just like everyone else, right? And so um, before I got really good with using the product, like somebody would say, hey, Thomas, can you show me how to use this? And I'd have this feeling. It's like, oh, no, like there's anxiety, there's stress, there's all this stuff because I'm not a pro at using this. Like Mm -hmm. I got to show somebody how to do something that they're probably way better at it than me. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what I found out is that is okay right? That is fine. So a lot of times when I'm talking to somebody who knows Braille much better than I do is I'm not going to just sit there and show them how to do everything. I'm going to lead them into how to do stuff. I'm going to show them the fundamentals. I'm going to, and fundamentals are easy to learn, right? Like how to navigate, how to do this, teach them the concepts. So you're talking about teaching or this is what you were saying to yourself. So, when you... so well, when I, what I, I said, it was okay. I learned that it was okay. Uh-huh. And then I learned that if this is a power braille user, somebody who's better at it than me, yeah. teaching them the concepts, they're going to be able to get there much faster than I could ever teach them. And that's, okay. And that's okay. Yeah. And there's one particular story. There is a, uh, a, a school uh, that, a school for the blind that I work with. Mm-hmm. And we had a you conversation. Here. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, this particular school for the blind, the, the AT, uh, the main AT person there um, was like, I'm really having trouble troubleshooting this product. Would it be okay? Or would it be okay if uh, I just had my student work with you? He's better at this than me. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And so we ended up working directly with the student to troubleshoot that product. And then that's what we did uh, for all of their products, right? They had a bunch of HIMSS products. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool because this AT person was like, you know what? This student is better at it than I am. And this is an AT instructor at a school for the blind, right? Mm -hmm. And so if they can do it, then any TVI could say, you know what? It's okay that I don't know everything. Right. And nobody knows. I drive a car and I don't know how the car's put together. Yeah. I watch TV. We watch TV. I'm I'm thinking of all these, but, but I know stuff for, for the blind, but like we all do stuff that we don't know all of it. Yeah, absolutely. And it is okay. Yeah. That's, That's the big thing. And you know what? I love that you, you're knowledgeable obviously about all the products you're proud of them i mean by the way that was a hymns polaris mini that you just flashed up if you want to Mm -hmm. do that again just get a little plug in there you can buy them through sage vision we're the hymns dealer in pennsylvania it's a handy little product but it's on our website but i think what what's the moral of the story thomas is we're kind of chatting about like reaching people and demoing and knowing product What's the moral of the story you just told? I would have to say that understanding that you are not a daily user of this product, Mm -hmm. that is okay. And it is okay for you to help somebody, um, even if they're better than you. And they get a lot out of it, whether you Mm -hmm. know it or not. So Mm -hmm. as long as you're trying, like that is the important thing. And that's uh, that's all you can do. Right. That's good. That's and it brings enough. joy to them because they actually have it in their hands and they might they, yeah. they might, might not ever have tried it before. There have been times where I've worked with people who are much better at these devices than I am. And at the end of it, I'm like, oh, like, I really hope they got something out of it. And they send me an email saying, hey, yeah. I learned a lot. And I'm like, yes, like, that's awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and like, there's something to be said. I'm just going to close with this. I love it. Yeah. You're awesome. There's something to be. I feel like we're on the radio. You've got your headphones on, but there's something to be said about COVID pandemic or whatever. And I know this is virtual. This is, you know, we're recording this, but there's something to be said about that human interaction and that connection that happens that that's part of helping people change their lives and feel good about what they're doing, whether they can see or with low vision blindness or they're sighted. I mean, just having that human interaction is really important. And I'm kind of waxing philosophically, but you and I are both in an industry where it's very personal. 
It's about yeah. your vision and your sight is precious. And what we try to do is not, we don't sell people things they don't want or can't use. Yeah. We figure out what works for them, Sage does. And that's why we're a great partner because Hims is that way too. And you, you, you don't know until you try it, until you meet somebody who can introduce it to you and that connection. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're great. You're an organ. You. Yeah. Uh, go eat your breakfast <laughs> and <laughs> right? uh, thank you for all your time today. And we're going to have people, we're going to share this on some snippets of it on social media and do some things with it and get it out there. Wonderful. Thank you. Happy holidays. You too. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.